This is the second part of a two-part video tutorial series on InDesign CS5. So one thing on my page that you probably don't see on your page is I have no columns. So I'm going to go to Layout here and add my columns. So I went to Layout, Margins and Columns, and I'm just going to make this 6. Now I want to bring in my artwork. So I want to take a look at the sketch, and this can be on a napkin. And here's the sketch that I have. Notice how my photograph is four columns of the six columns. My text is two columns and down here my sidebar, my breakout material, is across four columns. This is kind of good to sketch out your design before you just jump right in to InDesign. Have a sketch and then you can kind of work and tweak it as you go. So I'm going to bring in my photograph and I'm going to make sure I have the selection tool selected so no, no other item on the page is selected. So I click on my selection tool, File, Place, and I'm going to bring in my largest picture, which is the magazine size. And I'm going to hit Open. So there's a few ways you can bring in a picture. You can either just click and the picture appears. Um, and if you hold down Shift-Command, you can actually adjust accordingly, proportionally. That's Shift-Command or Shift-Alt on a PC. And I'm just dragging the corner, so that's one way. Another way you can do it is you can go to File, Place, pick your picture and you can actually draw the square that you want so notice how I'm staying on the column grid when I draw and it does it proportionally as well so that's another way you can actually draw and some people use this rectangle frame and they draw the picture where they want it to go to, as a placeholder and then they come in here to file place and they bring in their photograph notice how it crops the pictures way too big for that space, at least it's too big vertically. So I could come in here with my selection tool and just drag the handle down to get more of the photograph. What you don't want to do is use a photo the size that's bigger than what it comes in as. So say I'm like, you know, I really like this photograph, but I want it to be over five columns. And then I come in here and hold Shift Command and drag it over to five columns. Okay, so this is not this is what you do not want to do. It's adding pixels that are not there, right? So you really want to keep it at the size that it comes in as or make it smaller, but you don't want to go bigger. That's that's what you don't want to do. If you want a picture to be bigger than what it comes in as, my best advice is to go into Photoshop and look at the resolution and see if you can resample that image to a little bit less resolution and that way you can get some size out of it. Let me bring in my other picture. So file, place, and I'll bring in this small little detail picture here. Actually, I think I have two of them, so I'll bring in this one. And I'm going to put it right here in that third column. And you can see here, remember what I talked about, how it's bigger than what I needed. So I'm going to do shift command or shift alt and drag this little corner here and make it so it fits a little bit better. Now I'm going to bring in my type. You can actually draw a box, which is the method I prefer, where I take the type tool and I draw a two column text box here. Then I can go to file, just like a photograph, place, and I'm going to go into my text folder and I'm going to grab my main profile here. Okay. I'm also going to do the same down here with the sidebar. I'm just going to grab the type tool, come down here, and bring in file place my sidebar. So these obviously are not the typeface is not right the space between paragraphs so I'm gonna have to fix this but at least I'm getting my type in there. Next thing I want to do is make sure these are the columns that they should be. So according to my sketch this should be two columns and this should be three columns. So I'm just gonna control click I'm gonna have this selected with my selection tool and control click and go to text frame options. So Command B is one of those shortcuts you'll probably use a lot and want to remember. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and change this number of columns to 2. You can also get to this feature if I click on this and I want to make this 3 by going up here to Object Text Frame Options and then I can change this column as well, these columns to 3. Okay, so I'm starting to see my page take shape. I'm going to use my magnifying glass and draw a square around this so I can see that I put my headline of my piece and my little quick read or deck head or subhead, whatever you want to call it, also in text boxes up here. 
So I'm going to grab my type tool here and I'm going to copy and paste my headline, which I need to make bigger, obviously. I want to use Cambria, that's the typeface I've been using, and I'm going to change it to 70. And notice how it doesn't fit. I'm going to have to break this into separate lines. So I'm just going to use my type tool, make a break here, and I'm also going to center this. So I want to use my paragraph uh, attributes up here on the toolbar, and I'm going to make this centered. And rarely do I center things in design, but I think this page actually needs it. And I'm going to go also back to this character attributes and I'm going to adjust my letting. So notice how pizza doesn't have any descenders in the letters which creates this kind of ugly space here. I'm going to use the letting here to bring in that space a little bit more. I'm also going to capitalize the G in Globetrotter. Okay. I'll go ahead and adjust my text frame and now I'm going to bring in my deck head, my subhead, the quick read here. So I'm just going to draw a text box and I'm going to come over here and copy and paste into that new text box. And I'm going to make this bigger as well. I want to make sure that I'm matching my typefaces and I am. And I'm going to make this 20 point. Okay. Notice how the Globetrotter doesn't have descenders too. So you also want to use your little arrow keys on your keyboard to move and adjust text boxes. That's a quick way. Or you can just use your selection tool and move it down and up. If you hold the shift key, it'll keep it straight. If you don't hold your shift key, you actually have a little bit more flexibility. So now I'm going to clean up this text article. And this is very normal to do. So I'm just cleaning this up, taking out the spaces in between the paragraphs. So that's very webbish, right? In the web, you have space between paragraphs, but not so much in print. Another thing in print that you don't have on the web are tabs, right? These paragraphs need to have indents. So I'm going to sweep over the entire thing by hitting Command A or I can just drag over the entire thing. And now I want to add indents. To add indents, I can come over here to the paragraph attributes on my properties panel. So I'll click on this little paragraph here. And it gives me all these different options. Do I want a left indent, a right indent, and so forth. I just want a first line left indent for the paragraphs. So remember that rule of thumb, if you don't know how much spacing to do, use a pica. So I'm just going to go over here and do 1P, and that adds this nice indent on the paragraphs. But I don't want this first line to have an indent, that's the byline. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 0P, and that'll be flush left. I'll go back here to my character attributes and change that to bold to kind of make that byline stand out a little bit. Now I want to make sure that the story fits. It's a little too short. If you get this little, I'm just adjusting it using my selection tool and this middle handle here. If you get this little red plus mark at the end, it means the story's too long. And if you click on it and then kind of go over here to outer space, you'll actually see how long the story is and you can adjust accordingly. This is how you do jumps in magazines, right? I would put this on another page. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and come up here and make that fit. Now I'll bring down the headline a little bit. And you can actually use the arrows on your keyboard to adjust, or you can hold down the shift key and that keeps it kind of vertically straight. And I'll zoom out and you'll start to see our page take shape here. So now we're ready to work with the sidebar text. By the way, if these panels ever get in the way, you can always collapse them by clicking on these double arrows here, and that will expand and collapse the panels. You can also move them around, and you can close out of them as well if you don't want them on your page. You can always bring them back by going to Window and finding it what it is that you want. So if I want pages, if I want styles, the types and tables, which is what you'll use a lot, you can find them under Window. So you can have these panels here on the side, and again, you can collapse them by clicking on these little double arrows here. So I want to work with this breakout material here, and I'm going to zoom in so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm just using my magnifying glass on the toolbar and drawing an imaginary square so that I can see here the material I'm working with. This is the headline for my sidebar for this recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and take it off. And I'm using my type tool. I'm going to create a box all the way across that has my headline. 
This headline will go in that Helvetica font that I used for the, the section name. So I'm going to sweep over this and type in Helvetica. So you know how to do this already. I also want to make this a display size. I'm going to make this 16 point. And I want to make it the color of that page label. I want to bring that color back down here and actually sweep over my text with my type tool and now use my eyedrop tool to get that color onto my headline down here. Now I'll use my magnifying glass and zoom in. And now I can start adjusting, okay? Notice I have rulers up here. Now rulers are quite helpful. We haven't used these yet in aligning things. So if I want to bring down a guide rule here, I can just grab the ruler and come down here and notice where I see my pizza line up. I'm gonna bring my headline down there too so it also lines up. I also don't like these widows. See these little widows here? Um, these are words that kind of just hang out by themselves. And I'm going to try to get rid of those by making my columns wider. And there you go. And now I'll use my handles. I'm just using my direct my, my selection tool to make some of this work. Let me see if I can get that to break over. Okay, so now I'm still short. So here's where you actually kind of have to trim the type a little bit to make things like this work. And I bet that did it. There we go. And now I'll bring down my headline. Bring this up. And notice how my pizza is kind of slamming into the type. So I want to make sure that I have my selection tool selected. And it selects the picture frame box. I'm going to use shift command and drag this in a little bit. And I'm okay with the shadow kind of creeping into the type. That's fine. And there you have it. One thing I am missing is the caption underneath the photograph. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I'm just going to take a text box using my column grids, drag it all the way to the column. And here I can add in caption type. This is where you're going to want to add your name as a photographer. So I'm just going to put photo by, and you'll have your own style to do this, but this is where you want to put your name. You can also put in dummy type if you don't have the caption written yet. And to find dummy type, just go to type, and it's fill with placeholder text, and that'll fill in some placeholder text in your cut line information. I'm just going to move that over to here, okay? Now we can look at our page in full screen and we have pretty much everything designed. I'll go back to my sketch and it really does look like my sketch. Now I want to save this so I'm going to hit command S. You can also go to file, save, at save and I want to make this a PDF so that I can print it. So I'm going to go to file, export and I'm going to save this as a PDF, right? I don't type in PDF, it types it in for me, but I'm going to save it in my project folder. Go ahead and hit export. This is asking you what compatibility you want it with. Go ahead and just use the default. I'm going to go ahead and open up that PDF that it created, and then I can go to file, print. What's great about printing from a PDF is one, you get to see how your pictures reproduce on a printer. So that's always important to, to use the PDF to print your document. Now, it's not that you can't print from the InDesign document, it just takes longer. It hangs up the printer a little bit. So a PDF with flattened image is always the best route to go when you're making a proof to kind of look at alignment, to look at reproduction quality, colors, are colors readable, etc. So that's really why you want to make a quick proof to look at your page to see if all those things, if there's anything that's not aligned correctly and so forth. I hope in this tutorial you learned how to lay out a page with all of its content, that means images and text, and also learned how to align elements, apply color, apply typefaces, spacing, etc. There's a lot of ways to do things in InDesign. This is just one of many but hopefully it got you started on your next magazine spread.